Now, achieving a tie game in Yu-Gi-Oh! is actually kind of difficult, as Konami bans all the cards which encourage easy tie games, or changes them in some other way. So in this list, we'll go over the 10 best cards which have the potential to cause tie games. And at number 10, we have Ring of Destruction. This is one of those cards that used to be a really good one for causing tie games, until Konami gave it an errata to no longer do that. So what this card does is during your opponent's turn, you can target one of your opponent's monsters who has less attack than your opponent's life points. Then you can destroy that monster and inflict burn damage to yourself equal to that monster's attack. Then you inflict the same amount of damage to your opponent. So currently as it's worded, you can't actually cause a tie with this card because it deals the damage to you first and then checks your damage before doing it to your opponent. So you can just lose if it brings you down to zero and it will never do the damage to your opponent. It also just doesn't let you use the card if the damage would be more than your opponent's life points anyway. Now how this card used to work was you could just target any monster on the field with this card and then it would destroy it and do damage to both players equal to its attack at the same time. So it was much easier to cause a tie with this card if both you and your opponent's life points were low and a lot of the times people just use this card on their own monsters in order to burn their opponent for the last remaining life point damage they needed. And it was pretty good, but it occasionally caused tie games unintentionally and Konami doesn't like ties. It has something to do with extending games or something, but they do go another way to change cards which might accidentally cause ties, and Ring of Destruction was absolutely one of them, which is why it gets basically an honorable mention at number 10. And at number 9, we have Red Eyes Burn. This card has the effect where when a Red Eyes monster you control is destroyed, you can activate this card in order to make it so that both players take damage equal to that monster's attack. So if you use this card on Dragoon of Red Eyes, which is the highest attack monster with Red Eyes in its name, that's 3,000 points of damage to both players. So in order to cause a tie with this card, you have to get both players' life points below 3,000 and then let one of your Red Eyes monsters die in order to activate this card to force a tie, which is kind of difficult to do as you have to set this card first, wait for one of your Red Eyes monsters to get destroyed, or do it yourself, and it's honestly not even that much damage but it can technically cause a tie, and it does a lot more potential damage than some of the other lesser tie-causing cards. So, it makes this list at a low spot. And at number 8, we have Bad Reaction to Simochi. This card has the effect to convert any life point gains of your opponent into an equal amount of life point damage instead, which also Dark Lord Nurse has the same effect, so I guess she shares a spot with Bad Reaction on this list. Because you see, there are a couple of cards which give both players life points at the same time. One of them is called the Paths of Destiny. And what this card does is force both players to toss a coin. And then each player will gain a different effect based on their coin toss. If a player gets heads, then they gain 2,000 life points. But if they have a tails, then they take 2,000 points of damage. And with bad reaction to Samachi on the field, both of the results of Path of Destiny will inflict 2,000 points of damage to your opponent. But Bad Reaction to Samachi does not affect the player who uses the card, so there is the potential that you'll gain life points. So if you use Path of Destiny and gain a Tails result while you have Bad Reaction to Samachi on the field, then you can cause a tie, as the Paths of Destiny resolves its effect at the same time. Now, while the Path of Destiny only inflicts 2,000 damage, a bad reaction to Samachi deck will play multiple copies of the card, and there is the potential to activate three of them at the same time, and if all three of those results are tails, then you take 6,000 points of damage right there. That's kind of an unlikely scenario though, there is a better chance of just inflicting a whole bunch of damage to your opponent, and a bad reaction to Samachi deck can better set up a tie game scenario than something like Red Eyes Burn, simply because the entire deck revolves around burn and stall. So you can just get your opponent low, and let yourself get low before you activate your stall cards, and then use Path of Destiny in order to maybe cause a tie. It's not the greatest way to cause a tie in the world, but it is a little bit better than Red Eyes Burn. And at number 7, we have Card Destruction. This card forces both players to discard their entire hand, and then draw the same number of cards they discarded. So if you and your opponent have less than, say, 5 cards in your deck, and you both have 5 cards in your hand, then you and your opponent would deck out at the exact same time due to card destruction's effect. Now, this isn't the easiest thing in the world to pull off, but this is a really good card on its own, and just sees play normally in decks. So, if you're playing against your opponent and the game has kind of dragged on a little bit, and you guys are both nearly out of resources, 
then this card has the potential to accidentally cause a tie, and has a much higher potential to cause ties than a lot of the other cards on this list so far, even if it's not very good at causing ties intentionally. It's more like it kind of does it a little bit better than the other cards, because this card is good on its own, which is why it gets kind of a higher spot. And at number 6, we have Crimson Nova, the Dark Cubic Lord. This card has an effect where during your end phase, both players take 3000 points of damage at the same time. This card falls into the category of, can cause accidental ties, and it's kind of a wonder why this card exists, because if you just stall out with this card for 3 turns, and your opponent doesn't deal any damage or increase their life points, then you're guaranteed to cause a tie. And this card is also unaffected by activated monster effects, as long as the monster has less attack than this card. So it has the potential to stick around. But this card is kind of difficult to summon, and it's part of a bad archetype, so I guess that's kind of the reason why its effect is... okay. And why probably no one has ever heard of this card causing ties or being degenerate, because no one's playing cubics. In order to summon this card, you have to reveal three other cubic cards in your hand with different names which would require playing other cubics in your deck, and they're not very good. But this card does have good protection, has the potential to attack twice during the battle phase, plus has that burn damage which can cause ties during the end phase. And at number 5, we have Final Fusion. This is a card you can activate when two fusion monsters battle each other, where you negate the attack, and then each player will take damage equal to the combined attack of both of those fusion monsters. And since this card counts the attack on the field, it does take into account monsters who might have had their attack boosted up, by something like a power bond doubling your monster's attack. So if you bring out Cyber and Dragon for example, with power bond, it will have its attack at 8000, and if you attack into any of your opponent's fusion monsters, then that's an instant tie right there. And since one of the current meta decks plays fusion monsters pretty heavily, and since super polymerization is one of the most played cards in the game, there's a really good chance your opponent will have a fusion monster on their side of the field, so that you can activate final fusion. It's not a good combo, but we're not really looking for good combos on this list. Just ones which can cause a tie, and ones that are good at causing ties, and final fusion is pretty good at causing ties, as it has the potential to do a ton of damage to both players at the exact same time. And at number 4, we have the Dark Snake Syndrome. This card has the effect that during each of your standby phases, you inflict 200 damage to both players at the same time. And then during each of your following standby phases, this effect damage gets doubled. And then it gets doubled again and again, until eventually someone loses. So as long as you're able to stall out for 5 turns, it does 12,600 damage to both players on that 5th turn. As it will start out at 200, then go to 400 on the following turn, then 800, 1600, 3200, and then when it hits the next one at 6400, as long as both players' life points have not been modified, both players should have 1800 life points left. So 6400 points of damage to both players should easily cause a tie. And if both players somehow survive 6400 extra points of damage, then it will do 12800 points of damage after that, which will guarantee a tie at that point. Basically, with Dark Snake Syndrome, it will cause a tie on its own if you just stall out and protect the card. So in order to win with the card, you would have to manipulate your life points to either gain a whole bunch or cause your opponent to lose that 1800 you need, before it gets to the point where it causes a tie. This card is basically designed to cause a tie, unless you do something about it, which makes it one of the better tie-causing cards in the game, only beaten out by three slightly better ones that don't require you to keep out a continuous spell card on the field for 5 turns, which is actually kind of difficult. And at number 3, we have Morphing Jar. This card has the effect that when it's flipped face up, both players discard their entire hands and then they must draw 5 cards. This card has the potential to cause ties by forcing both players to deck out at the same time, just like with card destruction, as if you're unable to draw the amount of cards that a card effect is forcing you to do, you lose the duel. And with Morphing Jar, there is a deck that exists that revolves around giving Morphing Jar to your opponent, and then flipping it up and down a whole bunch of times until your opponent decks out. And that same deck has the potential to deck you out as well, so you have to be careful about refueling your deck in order to have more cards in your opponent. But it also means that same deck could just not worry about that, and just do the combo like normal and go for the tie, if they were looking for a tie game. 
and it would be very easy to accomplish as long as they got their combo going. The only problem with Morphin Jar is that it's limited to one copy, so it's kind of hard to be consistent with that kind of deck, and it's also a flip effect, which is kind of slow, but still a very decent tie enabling card, which is why it takes a pretty high spot on this list. And at number two, we have a banned card called Last Turn. This card has the effect where it can only be activated during your opponent's turn if your life points are 1,000 or less, which it will then allow you to select one monster on your side of the field, then send all cards in both players' hands and on the field to the graveyard, except your monster, then your opponent can special summon any one monster from their deck in attack position in order to attack your monster. And whoever's monster survives until the end phase wins the duel. However, any other cases result in a draw. And this is the only card in the game which specifically states in its card effect that the duel can result in a tie game. So as long as you just use a monster that can destroy your opponent's monster with its destruction, something like an Exploder Dragon, then you can basically guarantee a draw card with this as there's few main deck monsters in the game that can be special summoned directly from the deck, which would survive being destroyed by card effects like that. But currently, the card is banned, partly because it can accidentally cause ties, and also because if you just use a monster which prevents special summoning, you can basically instantly win with this card. It's pretty strong, but there is one card that is a little bit better at causing ties than a banned card, which is partly banned for accidentally causing ties. And at number one, we have the self-destruct button, a card which was designed to cause tie games and is currently banned because it causes tie games. Now, what this card does is if your opponent's life points are 7,000 more than your own, then this card will set both players' life points to zero. And since this card just sets them to zero, modifying them without inflicting any kind of damage, you can't actually prevent this card from setting your life points to zero in any way rather than just straight up negating the effect of this card itself. So if you're able to resolve the effect of self-destruct button, then it's going to be a tie game and there's nothing you can do about it. And this card was usually used as a last resort in Final Countdown decks, which are decks that revolve around a card called Final Countdown, which has an effect that allows you to win the duel as long as 20 turns pass after you use the card. So those decks would just stall out for 20 turns using Final Countdown, but they would have to pay 2,000 life points to use that card, and would generally have other cards in their deck that make them pay life points to draw cards or protect themselves. So it was very easy for a game state to appear where a Final Countdown deck had 7,000 less life points than their opponent. And if something went wrong in their strategy, they could just use Self-Destruct Button to cause a tie, and then try again in the next game in their match. And since Konami really doesn't like ties, nor do they really like Final Countdown decks, as they really mess with having a speedy tournament, as people would just stall for real world time after winning a game, and then side in a whole bunch of life point cards in order to win an overtime, they eventually banned self-destruct button, at the same time they limited final countdown to one copy per deck, to just really make sure no one would play that deck in tournaments. Although currently there is no limitations at all on self-destruct button in the OCG, because I guess that's not really an issue in that meta or something. Alright, and that's the end of the list. If you think I missed any other much better tie causing cards, I'd love to hear about them, as well as future ideas for gimmicky videos just like this one. And if you like this video, there's a whole playlist of like 70 other videos just like this one which will be linked at the end of this video.